What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Holy Potatoes. We are in space. That's right. It's called We're in Space, but I decided I was going to add an extra syllable and just say we are because it doesn't pain me like that. It looks like space is made out of cheese right here. I've never met a cheese that I didn't like. I'm sure they're out there. I'm quite positive. There's probably a cheese out there I didn't like, but I'm a stereotype in that regard. I love all cheese. Holy Potatoes, We're in Space is kind of an FTL type game. That's the best way to describe it. You're running from something. You have like a limited amount of turns until it catches you. You fly throughout the galaxy, but at the same time, the management aspect of it has been dialed up a little bit by comparison to FTL. Uh, in this game, you're going to build like little modules inside of your ship. You're going to upgrade stuff. You're going to be building guns. Your crew levels up and has little skills. There's tons of puns. Oh my god, there's so many puns. There's so many puns that I don't even know what to do with them all. But it's a game about vegetables in space shooting the shit out of each other and blowing stuff up. So without further ado, let's start our short little series here where we're going to look at the first, oh, I don't know, first couple hours. Decide if it's something that you can get into or not, something that you want to purchase for yourself. Let's, let's ride. So, new game. We are going to proceed. Proceed. Yup. The tutorial is a drag. I do want to skip it, indeed. The downside is that the tutorial actually has, like, pertinent storyline information, so you kind of have to play it, but honestly, at this point, I don't think I can sit through a 20-minute tutorial right now. Let's just call it, oh, we're going to call it the NCS. we got to name our ship here. We'll call it the NCS Rectal Fire. There we go, because <laughs> that's probably what it's going to turn into once my captaining skill is tested. The NCS Rectal Fire. Oof. I am still not used to this whole warping business. Use the bucket this time. I'm not cleaning that crap up again. So does warping give her diarrhea? Does it make her vomit? I don't know if you're being a literalist or not right now. But you're my sister. You're supposed to take care of me. I'm your younger sister. You should be taking care of me. But the whole useless older sister trope is cute. And I take care of... Hey, you're late. Excuse me? There's been another incident. We called you a soul ago. It took you long enough to respond. Whoa, buddy. You got the wrong spuds. We just, uh... That warping space cat has been a menace for far too long. Stealing our food, knocking our stuff over on purpose. Did you say warping space cat? How is that even possible? Spud, if I knew, it blinks all over the place, stares us dead in the eye, and then knocks glasses and ceramics off the shelves. My precious trying to plate collection. Ugh, now that you're here, Animal Control, nab that thing and get rid of it. But we're not, uh, animal... Absolutely, sir. We'll have it out of your hair. My apologies. Poor choice of words. <laughs> hey, wait, what? We will? Think about it. If we caught this space cat that can warp at will, I could probably develop some new tech if I studied it for a while. And that'll solve our warp problems. Genius. All right, I got this. Uh, you're in luck, sir. We're the best in the business. I could care less. Couldn't care less even. Just get rid of that thing. And don't you dare show your face. No time to waste to the NCS rectal fire. That potato definitely looks like it's gone a little bit bad. That potato right there, it looks like her chin just runs straight into her boob cleavage. So she's basically got, like, a cleavage chin. Like, I don't know, chin leavage, if you will. But she's also got a monocle that has kind of like an Icarus thing on the side of it, which is kind of dope. I'm down, that's cool. This lady's got eyebrows that are attached to her goggles. That way she can emote properly, even with her facial gear on. Good plan. Let's start by checking out the surrounding galaxies. It couldn't have gone too far. Indeed, it couldn't have. Curiosity killed the... Meow! See, now my cats are going to be all over me for the rest of the night because I made that noise. My cats are super obnoxious when it comes to pets and, like, them having to be the center of my attention all the time. It's a little upsetting. So this is our ship. This is the interior. We haven't actually built anything in this area yet. This will be the training area. This will be the science research area. This is our trauma ward. This is our workshop. And this is our bridge. As of right now, our bridge has two machines inside of it. If we drag and drop weapons to these, we can assign weapons. So I'm going to put the pea shooter in here. And then I'll put the Blessed Apollo in here, too, which is kind of our weird little dong missile, or I don't know, our protruding nipple missile, or whatever the hell it is, boob missile. Whatever works. We can zoom on out using the scroll bar, in and out. You click on the place you want to go. But right now, we're inside of the hub, so I don't want to go anywhere. At the moment, we've got ten grand on us. Not too bad. Ten grand on our persons. We've got fifty of every resource. That's antimatter, plasma, or nanofibres. And also bio waste, which is basically just poo, but we figured out a way to turn it into weapons and stuff. Isn't that awesome? The future is crazy. Down here, you'll see a loose collection of naked potatoes running around. For some reason, they are unencumbered by clothing like the rest of us. Haven't quite figured that part out yet, why the NPC potatoes don't have to wear clothes, but we do. Seems like a bit of an unfair constriction, but you know what? We'll move forward. As of right now, this is a place where we can buy weapon blueprints. 
This right here is a place where we can buy and trade all the basic resources, which you will be using this in the future. Sometimes you just get galaxies where you can't get the resources you need, so you got to trade for them. This right here is ship upgrades, where we can upgrade our bridge, we can add research labs, training rooms, basically anything you can think of we can add right here. What I would recommend you first spend your docket of cash on is a capacitor that doesn't suck. This won't seem like an awesome plan because you don't know the game mechanics yet if this is your first time viewing it. However, trust me, when you get into your first combat, you'll be like, oh my god, I wish I had more electricity right now. This is a bummer. How do I get more electricity? Well, these capacitors are what you're looking for. I recommend taking the charge capacitor that gives you the maximum charge per turn and has the lowest maximum charge because you're never going to let it build up to that level anyways. So, eh, who cares? I'm going to add that capacitor. Sounds good. We'll go back to the hub. That's the money we're going to spend for right now. We should probably hire a new crewman. Our current crew, let's take a look at their skill sets so that you know that we're working with here on the rectal fire. We've got a Spuffy Combat Specialist. So her name is Spuffy. She is a combat specialist. She's got combat prowess 1, which makes us hit harder. Second wind level 1, which I'm not sure what that does. Uh, he's Scallion Johansson. Has laser fortification, which gives our lasers armoring versus being hit. And then laser luck, I think, raises their chance of critting. We have George Looney, who is over here, who's a crafter. He does shrapnel crafting and laser crafting, which is actually much, much better than my last startup. Uh, this guy is actually capable of making super cool stuff for us. My last guy had shrapnel crafting and then something else that was shrapnel. And so it kind of sucked because I don't use shrapnel weapons all that often. Every weapon in the game does something different. They start you out with some of the basics. So you've got a shrapnel gun right here. It's basically a flat cannon. It's got low accuracy, but it hits everything on their ship for a small amount of damage. The missile does pretty good damage but also splashes anything adjacent, which is pretty awesome. And then the pea shooter is just a straight laser. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It deals 105 damage, and it's got 100% accuracy. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. They come in different grades from D on up to A. I don't think I've seen anything lower than a D. A means that it's blessed, and it's a really, really, really good weapon, and that it gets bonus damage and bonus accuracy and bonus crit and all kinds of good stuff. So they start you out with the sweet shit right now. What we want to do is we want to assign our laser guy to that console, and we want to assign her to the missile boob console. Ultimate missile boob power! It will be ours. And then on this side, we probably want to craft a new weapon. Do we have anything we can craft right now? Just a boom barrage? I don't like the boom barrage, so I'm not going to craft that. I'm going to ignore it for right now, and he can just, like, limp. He seems like he's got a leg injury. Now, again, when you're shaped like a cube, I would assume that the ergonomics of walking would be slightly different, so maybe it's just hard to walk. We have 18 souls, and so the bad guys show up and kick our asses. That means we can tool around the galaxy, do whatever we want, have fun, just as long as we're out of here in 18 souls and go on to the next map. There does appear to be some bleed over between souls you have left when you go to the next map, but I haven't been able to verify that 100%. Like, I, I've left maps and had three souls left over and it seemed like they got added to the next map, but I can't verify that, so don't quote me on it. I haven't tested it yet. Haven't tested it yet by writing down what every single wave or every single galaxy souls are and then seeing if it adds because that's how you would do it. Our mission right now is to explore nearby planets. The mischievous space cat couldn't have gone far. Let's search the planets in the vicinity of the hub. Come here, kitty kitty. So we need to leave the hub in order to do this. That'd be the best way to do it anyways. Uh, if you really wanted to be a badass, what I would suggest we also do is that we go to the mod center. That's not the mod center. That's the trade depot. Trade depot. We trade depot and we trade a lot. See, I just broke my fundamental rule. White guys aren't allowed to do the Jamaican voice. I broke one of my fundamental rules. Now I gotta go kill myself in the backyard. Let's see here. Alright, so I wanted to build a laser over here, because we just bought that. It's gonna cost us 30 plasma. But he should be able to finish it by the time we arrive at our first location in one soul. He also has like a, a hair tooth problem going on. He's got buck teeth. He got Bugs Bunny teeth. It is what it is. Some people born that way. I don't know. Everybody has uniform teeth nowadays. Have you noticed that? Maybe that's just like a thing in America. I don't know. But like, it seems to me everybody gets braces now in the United... Like, when I was a kid, one of the things that made you stand out is everybody had like crooked teeth and stuff. I still have crooked teeth. I like my crooked teeth. Meh. I like, I like them enough to where... Eh. I'm not really willing to straighten my teeth out and have them filed down and stuff like that. I kind of feel like uh, genetics made me this way. And since it's not crippling with regards to my appearance, eh. Keep it the way it is. I don't know, people care too much about appearance, I guess. But maybe that's gained as a benefit of just being incredibly beautiful, which, you know, I am. 
So, you know, I, I've kind of got a position on a pedestal right now, so maybe that's why I'm so accepting. I'm also blessed with a huge amount of humility. The most humility, in fact. There's a thing flying through. What the shit is that? Is that a potato? Just like in a spacesuit with a jetpack? I don't know. There's a number of places we can go. We can go to Galatea. We can go to... Kalionera. And from there, we get plasma and we get nanofibers. Ooh, okay. From here, we get antimatter and poo. From Hecate or Hecate, or I never know how to say that word. From over here, we get plasma and ore. Ooh, I want plasma and ore. We're going to go over here to Halamede. Yep, Halamede sounds like a disease in your mouth. Like, sorry, man, I got a killer case of Halamede right now. That's what it reminds me of. Makes me think of things that have gone wrong inside of your mouth plate. Uh, yeah, we'll go to Halamede. It's going to cost us 19 fuel. We have 100 right now. Let's go. Boom. I like how we just skeek skirk. We, like, burn out on the pad. We don't, like, pull away slowly. We're just like, skrrr. We just get sideways off the pad. Super dope. So crafting workshop. Ooh, he made another blessed pea shooter. What a bamf. Ooh, good man. Hell yeah. Normally, you actually don't have luck like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip two blessed pea shooters because I don't like the missiles. There we go. The best item in the game is actually like a crossbow, and every time you shoot it at the enemy, it gives you free money. It's the greatest thing ever. Like, seriously, once you get to it at that point of the game, I equip it on everything, and I get like $1,000 every single time I shoot the enemy, and I get all the upgrades super early. It deals hella damage. It's just like, how did this get into the game? It's so unbalanced, but it's so good. So now that we're at this planet, we want to explore, and that's exactly what we going to do. So there's our two little pea shooters. When you shoot pea at your enemies... They might enjoy it. Sometimes you got to pay to have pee shot at you. Other people would find it to be incredibly disconcerting. It's really down to subjective tastes. I don't know. Let's start shooting pee at some people, though. So the way that this works is you fly around. Their hull is pretty fragile. Be careful not to let our guard down, though. Okay, so the way that this works, you have to do encounters. On a medium planet, you'll have, like, four encounters. Those encounters will be a varying difficulty. Sometimes they're just little text events, and you choose an option, and something happens. Sometimes it's combat, like with this leak right here with the giant F on his tunic. His leak tunic. He leaked in his tunic. But, uh, yeah, combat works like this. So we have our shields. We can turn those on and off if we want. These shields will be absorbed first if a shot goes at that location. We can move it to either of our pea shooters as well if we really, really want to. In fact, I would recommend that we do so to the more fragile pea shooter. And then on this side, we now need to decide what we want to shoot at. I'm going to shoot at him right there. We also have a special ability called the Hail Mary, which we ram the enemy and it does a bunch of damage. For right now, all of our attacks cost charge, which is listed right here in the top right-hand corner of the little window for each attack. We only have five charge right now, so we can't really do a whole lot. But that's why I wanted to regenerate a lot of charge so that I could double fire weapons before my opponent can. Because to me, that's a very, very important thing. We had a crit on our first shot. Very, very nice. Flat gun's going to go out and deal a little bit of damage, but our shield's going to absorb a lot of it. Hull took a little brunt right there, but we'll go ahead and fire a shot right there. Then we'll fire a shot right there. The enemy will surrender if you destroy all of their weapons. I find that's the quickest way to end the fight. Some people will obviously disagree with me right there. You also get a bonus for destroying parts of their ships after the combat ends, and so you can end up with a lot more money just by destroying all their ship parts and then allowing them to surrender. Now, you can shoot down enemy ships, but there's no bonus for, like, a complete destruction, I don't think. This guy is offering us $623 to allow him to escape. I'm going to take that because I actually think this is the most time efficient and the best way to make it through. Just me personally, if you shoot him down, you make a little bit more money, but once they run out of guns, they start ramming you, and when they ram you, it deals a ton of damage to every single thing on your ship except for what's shielded. It's just not worth it in the long run. Just let him escape. So there it is. We've earned about 900 bucks, and we got a free boom barrage, which I'm probably just going to sell when we get back to town. For right now, the name of the game is grinding on up and making sure that we have lots of good stuff. Hey, there's a leak in your ship. There's a leak in your ship, too. Your ship is full of leaks. Let's go ahead and continue firing. The combat is turn-based, Final Fantasy style. So if you're sort of into that, if the numbers are in red, it means we critted. And that's a good thing. You really, really want to crit. When he fired, he missed, so that's great. Damage is carried over in between combats, and so the goal is to finish the planet without having to retreat. If you retreat, you keep all of your loot, but at the same time, the time is still spent. The amount of souls that you had to spend here are already spent. Uh, he's opening up on our hull, which is a bit of a downer. I'm going to go ahead and swap the shields over to the hull now that we're about halfway through. We should be able to destroy that. There it is. He's going to offer to surrender. We're going to take it. And boom. Boom. Made another 900 bucks. Easy peasy. Who knew it would be so simple? 
Got another pea shooter pattern, in case you're into that sort of thing. I find that the pea shooter is probably one of the best starter weapons, just because it allows you to do a lot of single target damage to an enemy, and single target is what wins here. Spreading damage around just makes you too slow and slothful to get anything finished off. This time around, I'm going to go for the flat gun. I don't like the look of its face. The flat gun and the missile are both kind of concerning. Flat guns in collaboration with missiles can actually cause you all kinds of problems, so you got to be careful about it because they can lay down a lot of DACA in one turn that is spread all over your ship. However, if I can get the flat gun first, he's going to fire missiles at us. That went straight to the hull, but the hull shield was on. As you can see, the meter goes down. When that runs out, the hull shield will deactivate. Let's go ahead and open up on him. We may, if we double crit, be able to knock that out in one turn. Nope. We got it just shy, so we're going to sink one more hit. There it is. Our guns are taking a little bit of damage, but they should heal in between rounds. You kind of hope that you don't get, like, all combat on your encounters, because sometimes you can get a lot of free loot just by doing nothing. I'm going to let him bribe me for the 713, and we're going to get almost a 1,000 right there, and another boom barrage. Now, each one of those modules we're picking up, if you're not going to use them, you can sell them for, like, 500 bucks a pop. So not bad. While roaming the skies above Halamede, the ship's onboard metal detection systems pick up the signs of an ornate chest half buried in the side of a hill. A treasure chest? There's got to be treasure inside. Bring it up, Faye. Yeah, sure. Cassie rushes to open the chest as soon as it's brought on board. Ooh, here goes nothing. Is that a bomb? Oh, no! Throw it out! Throw it out! They did not manage to throw it out in time, and it explodes in the ship, damaging your hull. Bummer. But our exploration is complete. I was hoping we'd get some freebie metal from it. So from that adventure, we made about 3,000 starch, which is our cash. We got three objects right there, so that's going to be roughly 4,200 once we sell all those off. We got 12 plasma. We got 11 ore. The weapons that I like almost universally take plasma, antimatter, and ore, so I don't tend to worry about these two over here. But based on your preference and what things you like when you play the game, by all means, feel free to pick whatever resources you like that allow you to craft the things that you want to craft. Alternatively, the other thing that you can do is you can craft these into stuff, but I'd warn you, a lot of times you actually don't sell these for, like, for example, so it's 500 for the pattern. Let's say I sell the pattern, I get 500 bucks, so that's 500 in profit. But let's say I make a boom barrage. The 20 ore will cost me about 800. The boom barrage itself is worth 500 as a pattern. So we're already up to 1300 in materials spent. If it's like a C quality or a D quality, you're going to lose money on that when you sell it. So you got to hope for a B or an A. If you get an A, you'll make like 800. But I find that the better gamble is just to sell these when you've got the opportunity to do so. Mischievous space cat couldn't have gone too far. We're not going to do that right now because I know what happens when we do that. So we're not going to mess with it. Instead, we are going to explore Uno Mas Times. So our hull will not get repaired. However... All of our little modules will, so it's not that bad, especially when you consider that we can just leave things that I should have used the better gun. They both cost the same amount, and one does five more damage. Damn, I'm being shot with boob missiles. No! It's a boob missile barrage. Double fire on that. We are getting a lot of combat right now. A lot of combat. In my last playthrough, I got a whole bunch of story stuff. Like, story thing after story thing after story thing. And it was kind of unique. This time around, it looks like we're going to be doing a lot of fighting. That's okay. Fighting is more profitable a lot of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. I mean, the events can give you some nice stuff. Okay, so we're going to swap that over to slot two so that it doesn't take any more damage. And then we're going to open up right there. Pew, 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 pew. Down goes the boob missile. He's going to surrender. I will take his money. That's cool. We make about another thou. Good stuff. Uh, when you go back to the hub, you get yourself refueled for free, and you also get your armor repaired for free. So things to think about while you're playing. If your weapons get destroyed, they are destroyed forever. So keep that in mind. You would have to craft another one. So be very, very careful about what you let get destroyed. Because losing gear in this game, there are like unique objects like Diablo style that you really can't get anywhere else. And if they get destroyed, it can be major, major brain drain for you as a pilot. It can suck. So I'm going to have to swap around shields to something else in just a moment. I'll take that over to the one slot. They are shifting their fire around pretty aggressively. And unfortunately, I'm not one-shotting any of their parts, so... Ah, he swapped around on me again. Little bastard. Uh, there are ways to repair your stuff. 
We're on ground zero right now. Clears all buffs and debuffs every turn. Okay, so apparently we're in a ground zero zone. He's going to bribe us. Okay, so we got another Apollo. That's pretty cool. Since both of our pea shooters are of reasonably solid quality, I'm a little bit nervous about... Oh, good. There's a gas station up ahead. You want to refuel or... Oh, it's free fuel day. Free fuel day. They rush in and join the extremely long queue leading towards the gas station. Eventually, after a really long wait time, they manage to get in and get their free fuel. Man, ain't nothing free. I don't trust that for a second. There's something wrong with that fuel. I can promise you that. Hey, the potato with pink hair. Cassie and Faye see a beautiful blonde cheese girl stride up to them, a perky smile on her face. Ah, you have a ship, right? I want to join your crew. We're just not going to accept anybody. Why should we take you? I'm an able hand in the ship, and I need to look for somebody. I need to look for my Kenina. What? What's a Kenina? Not a what? A who? Kenina is my future prince in shining armor. He's lovely, handsome, caring, sweet, imaginary. Not for long. I've waited for him for years, but I'm not waiting anymore. I'm going to go look for him. I'll find my Kenina. And we can get married and have kids and live in a nice country cottage and he can cook and clean while I enjoy a high-flying career job and it'll be a perfect happy ending. Oh, I kind of like her. What do you think? Well, can like he have a high-flying career too and then you guys can just like neglect your home life and just slowly grow to resent each other? I mean, you know, it's an option. I'm just saying. Let's take her on. Welcome to the NCS Rectal Fires crew, Mrs. Uh, what's your name? Barbary. Thanks for taking me on. Oh, because she's a cheese. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to exploring the universe and finding my Kenina. More than happy to help. I can't wait for you to find your Kenina. It's so romantic. Yep, can't wait too, though I won't mind if it's a Jane instead of a Kenina. Gender is a social construct, am I right? Cassie and Barbary walk off gossiping happily, Faye following behind. Barbary joined your crew. And with that... Oh, we still have another encounter left. That's cool. Their hull seems fragile. You know, I hate to admit it, but it might be quicker just to, like, DPS through. I'm going to try. Ooh, straight for the hull, huh? This guy's vicious. Okay, that's fine. I can fix the hull. I can't really fix the guns on the fly. I think that should knock that out. Whether or not on the next turn we'll be able to kill off... Woo! Tough call. Very tough call. Yeah, ram him. Please let it work. The Hail Mary. It worked. Hooray, we win. Hull destruction bonus, nine fuel. So yeah, if you destroy their hull, you get bonus fuel, but you don't get bonus money. I just let them surrender and destroy their parts. It's the more profitable way to do this. Made about 3,500 there. Got some extra stuff and some supplies. So I'm thinking it's time for us to go back to the hub and re -fituate. Which is kind of like resituating, but also with fitting your ship. So that place is small and easy. This place, they don't really like us yet. We'll go back to the Star Hub. It's going to cost 19 fuel. Kind of a waste with regards to our fuel supply, but at the same time, we got to do it because our hull is busted up. Our hull is in bad shape, and I would prefer for it to be in good shape. We also have a little bit of money to spend and also some things to sell. So I would recommend we do that now. Let's sell off some of these extra parts that we got going on. I'm not going to craft any of the missiles, I'll be honest with you. So I'd rather just take the money. I'm probably not going to craft any of the boom barrages either. Probably just going to leave those alone, but I'll keep one just in case. Actually, no, I won't. I'll sell it. Well, what were, what were Barbary's skills, actually? Let's find out what Barbary's skills are, because if she's like a shrapnel surgeon, she is railgun crafter and shrapnel craftsmaster. What does craftsmaster mean? Can I, like, look at her? Where's my... Is there a crew hub area around here where I can just look at crew all day, every day? I know there's, like, a manage my crew area. Let me see. Is there? Overview. There we go. I knew there was one around here somewhere. So with Barbri, she is a crafts master. 5% chance to produce a perfect shrapnel when crafting. That's pretty good. Like, it's not that bad at all. Sorry, I'm taking a tug from my flask right now. It's not a flask. I'm just lying. It's a Snapple. This episode brought to you by Snapple. Uh, we have about 10 grand to spend right now. I would suggest we put that into some ship upgrades so that we are ahead of the curve because the game is not a roguelike in the strictest sense. 
but it kind of plays like one where you can definitely get behind the eight ball, and by that point, it's kind of too late. So my suggestion would be, you know, put some money into some upgrades. I'm going to buy the bridge level two. That is going to increase the HP of all of our guns by 50. Not bad. I would also suggest that maybe we take the research lab or the training room or something like that. A storage unit might not be a terrible call either. Hmm. Not overstocked on anything but ore yet, but actually ore looks like it's worth the most here. So I'll keep that in mind too, but we're out of time for right now. My name is Splattercat. This is Holy Potatoes. We're in space. Part of a widely expanding... I don't know if you heard about Holy Potatoes, a weapon shop. Kind of similar. Made by the same people. There's a rapidly expanding vegetable-based entrepreneurial ship going on in this indie genre. And this game is pretty cool. That's why I decided to feature it here for a little while. Uh, if you like what I do here on the channel, think about checking out the Patreon down below. It's a great way to support me and make sure that I don't go anywhere. Aside from that, if you wanted to get the game for yourself, you're intrigued so far, by all means. I got a link for you down below as well. So without much else to say, hi to everybody. I'll see you next time.